Hello students. Today we're going to talk about lesson 11, tense and aspect in this course. So today we are going to learn what is tense and what is aspect in this course analysis. So first of all, we're going to talk about the objectives and outcomes of the course of the topic today. The objective is participants will be able to distinguish between forms of tense and aspect. So then the, you will be able to define them in the text. So from this lesson, you're going to learn and you're going to be aware about tense and aspect have a clear understanding about their usage, and you will be able to define them in the text. So terms. We have some terms from this lesson. Derived nominal, derived subject, defective verbs, inflected verbs, from pronominal suffixes. So as you see, here we have tense, and aspect here. So if you give a definition, what is tense about? Tense is an inflection on a verb, is reference. To the time of the utterance, it is a correspondence between the form of the verb and our concept of time. So in terms of, you can say, the time, and the action together can be found as a tense. So here is the aspect, what it is. Aspect is a term used to describe the state of the verb action as beginning in progress or completed. It expresses how the speaker views the action of the verb. There are really only two true tenses in English. You can say past and present. It indicates when the time of evaluation occurs. In aspect, it indicates how the speaker views the situation. And the future is technically not a tense because the verb is not marked. It provides information about duration completion, and frequency. This is, can be seen in aspect of the sentence. So the temporally when, the temporally how. So between the tense and aspect here, you can say some differences and you can easily distinguish the differences between them. So English tense. There are two tenses in English, past, and present, there is no obvious future tense corresponding to the time or tense relation for the present and past. The future is denoted by means of modal auxiliaries as in by simple present forms as in or progressive forms as in and D you can say. A, I will go to school. Here is it is, it can be modal auxiliaries, will. He leaves for London tomorrow. He is, by simple present forms. It is going to rain, progressive forms, you can see here. And D, the train is leaving tonight. This is also one of the uh, progressive form of it. Here is, you can see the four, forms of the future uh, tense, but it, not, it doesn't really just call the, the um, future tense. It's just denoted by means of modal auxiliary. It is, you can see, present forms and progressive forms, you can see. The present, the, in the simple present, only the third person singular is marked for tense by suffix s and es you can see he plays she plays it plays the morpheme s has a small 
all the forms in the same distribution as the plural suffix and possessive suffix of the noun. S, Z, is. As in sleeps, brushes, changes, raises. The majority of modal auxiliaries are said to have the tense, can, may, shall, will, must, or use in the presence, present tense too. So the auxiliaries can, may, shall, will, and must are not inflected for tense. For example, I can, we can, you can, they can, he can, she can, it can. The present forms of have and do are only inflected for the third person singular nouns and words for which the third person singular pronouns will substitute and word groups. For example, B has three suppletive forms in the present tense and quasi auxiliaries may precede the verb stem, the present participle, and the past participle. And now just we will turn to the past, you see that? The simple past forms takes on two forms, regular and irregular. The regular form ends with the suffix ed. The irregular past tense takes on numerous forms. So, for example, some verbs remain the same. For example, cut, put, and burst. Some forms, they pass by a supplative form. Some replace the entire stem by a whole different stem. For example, when, what, were, is, and are and etc. The past tense form of the verb is not inflected, just you can say mark it, for the first, second, or third person nouns or pronouns. It, it doesn't just um, choose any um, person in the text, in the sentence. The past tense form of the modal auxiliaries can may, shall, will, must, or could, might, should, would, out to. Must and out do not have parallel forms like the others. To express the past tense of the must in the sense of necessity, one say had to. The past tense form of the quasi auxiliaries like be, do, and have are was, were, did, and had. These past forms may precede the verb stem, the present participle, and the past participle. The quasi auxiliaries do is used in questions, negative sentences, and emphatic affirmations. These past tense forms are not marked in accordance with the subject. So here is the English aspect. Verbs fall into two categories in terms of lexical aspect, like stative verbs and dynamic verbs. So stative verbs like describe the states or situations rather than action. These describe a state and are normally used only in the simple. Stated verbs are either not at all in the progressive or only occasionally. Form, I believe in life on Mars. I believe in life on Mars. Not I'm believing, not I am believing, because believe here is used as a state of verb. States are continuous and unchanging and can be emotional, physical, or cognitive. For example, she hates her boss. She hates her boss. Here is a word hate is emotional. Therefore, it, it, it's used as the state of verb. State of verbs. States of being and having, for example, be, apply, belong, have, concern, cause, depend, resemble, contain, lack, own, possess, weigh. Intellectual states, assume, believe, doubt, expect, forget, hope, imagine, now, notice, realize, Remember, suppose, I think, be of the opinion, understand, wonder. Emotional states agree, consider, hate, intent, like, love, need, pity, prefer, regard, trust, 
want and wish. States of physical sensation, ache, hurt, itch, tickle. States of perception, feel, hear, see, smell, taste, appear, or seem. This class has 17 students. My dog is having a senior moment. Stop being such an idiot. You are being stubborn. My little brother has been smelling funny lately. My little brother smells funny. So here is, you can see two, the same words or verbs in the two sentences. Here's colored in green, red, and purple. Just here you can see, has and having, being and being. So here it is, smelling and smells. So what are the differences then? So here it is, you can say, has, it is a state of verb, and is having is dynamic. It is, stop being such an idiot, is the state, state, of, state of verb, and here it is, that you are being stubborn is a dynamic. It also has been smelling is dynamic, smells is um, state of verb. So dynamic verbs, what are they? Activity verbs you can say, and it can be just an answer to this question, what do? Activity verbs express actions that go on for a potentially indefinite period of time. The actions are constant, run, swim, or walk, or involve an inherent change like decline, develop, and grow. Activities denote situations that are seen as going on in the same kind of way over a period of time and has having no built-in boundary. For example, the dog chases the cat for days. The dog chased the cat for days. As you can see, for days, and the chase, the word chase, and Harry talked to Emma for hours. It is, you can see the verb, talk, and four hours. So, achievement verbs, what are they? Achievement verbs have to do with the beginning or end of the event or a con conceit of as having no duration. They might be described as being all boundary. Other achievement verbs are wink, knock, and step. For example, the dog caught the cat. Harry told Emma the whole story. There is no any um, the time boundaries, you can say. Accomplishment verbs. This, these are also one of the types of the dynamic verbs. Accomplishment verbs are verbs that have a built-in boundary. They are related to situations with two components like activity phase and then a closing phase. Example, the beaver built a dam, the beaver built a dam and played the tune on the piano. You can see the activity phase and closing phase. The beaver was building the dam. Mrs. Foster was winking at John. Here is you can say. An English aspect. English has the following aspects like simple, progressive and perfective. And progressive, the present and past progressive consists of B plus present participle like ing form. And seven supplementary form of B are used as the first member of the verb phrases. Only the first member of the verbal phrase is inflected in accordance with the subject. The second member doesn't change. The perfective, the past and present perfect consist of have plus past participle, and the three forms of the have serve as a first member of the verb phrase. The first member has changed in accordance with the subject. The second member, which consists of the past participle or the main verb, doesn't. So here, as you can see, shall is used with. The first person pronouns to express a strong possibility or near certainty of an action which is to take place in the near future. The second and third person pronounce to express a comment. The second and third person pronounce to express a threat and determination. 
I shall be 30 on the next Tuesday. You shall not lie. You are commanded to not to lie. You shall regret this. You shall apologize. You will be obliged to apologize. Here, as you can see, the um, rules. Will is used with first person pronouns to express ideas such as promise, threat, determination, and willingness. I will try to get him a good job. It is promise. I will teach you a lesson. It is threat. We will not let you go. Determination. All right. I will come with you. Willingness. And second and third person pronoun to express simple futurity. He will be back in a day or two. The distinctions between shall and will are, are fast disappearing. Shall is now hardly used with the second and third person pronoun. In the first person, however, shall is still being used to indicate simple future. English, simple future. The simple pre present replaces future in clauses of time and condition as in, like, let's wait until he comes. This tense expresses a future event that is part of a settled program. The film starts at 7 o'clock. The plane arrives at 8, 6 tomorrow. So, future time in the past. Some of the future constructions in English discussed above can be used to show future time as viewed from a viewpoint in the past. Consider, I made the needed maintenance to my car so that it would pass the safety in inspection. He hurried because he knew that he was going to be late. I was about to miss the train. Thank you. Now just we will see some examples from the given another, another source. Um, you can see that. It is given some real examples. Here is given some real examples. So, not all that long since, perhaps 10 years ago, this friend of mine, her son, was in, in hospital. And he had a serious accident and he was unconscious for a long time. Anyway, she went to see him one day and she says, has anybody been to see you? And he says, no, but right nice long young lady came to see me. She said, she was lovely. She stood at the foot of me, but, you know, she had a little word with me. Well, eventually he, be, he came home and there's a lot of family in the house. And he met is this friend of mine brought these photographs out of the family through the years and passing them around and he's looking at them and he said, oh, that's that young lady that came to see me when I was in bed. She died when she was born and so. So here is, you can see that some um, given tense and aspect here. And um, he, he said, in the following extract, the speaker is recounting a ghost story. Note the shift in the tense and aspect are crucial junctures. Note how, he says, prefaces the significant event of the appearance of the lady. Historic present occurs again. Accompanied by progressive aspect, he's looking at the highest moment of suspense in, the, in detail. Okay, so first of all, we're going to define what are the tenses here. So we just mentioned we, ha we, we have two uh, special tenses, present and past. So here, as you can see, that um, was in hospital, had had, and here you can see, was in hospital, and here is, you can see the had had, past perfect, here is also called past and was unconscious, here is used was to, and uh, went, here is used, you can see that, and uh, 
she said. So these are called uh, tense of the uh, given discourse. And what are the aspects? So we just counted some aspects of uh, English um, English um, words in given in the given text here. So you can say um, progressive aspect. He is looking. He is looking. His progressive aspect. Now we see that what what progressive aspect we have in the given text here. So here is you can see passing. Passing is also just called the progressive aspect. So you can easily find if you see the real examples of the given um, given example in the previous topics here. Like now, just I will I will show you here is the English aspect. We have simple progressive and perfective aspect as we mentioned, and here is a given in the example. We can see we can see different aspects in the given discourse here. At the highest moment, suspend in the tail. You can see. So, if you have any questions. If you have any questions, you can just um, leave it um, in the uh, Moodle platform. So this is, that's all. Thank you very much. Our lesson is over. Thank you. Bye-bye.